By June 1855, the Institute had enough reliable income to rent a room on the fourth floor of the Express Building that was owned by Sam Brannan. We won't get into him, but uh, <laughs> he's the character. Anyway, once we had a place to put them, the book donations started pouring in, and a visitor to the new digs described it as being very comfortable with 400 books and a growing collection of scientific curiosities, including samples of California minerals. What else would you put in your case, right? Everyone's coming here to see the minerals. <laughs> um, petrified Oregon pine. Ooh. And an eagle's leg and claw of monstrous size. Now, this eagle apparently was shot while carrying off a sheep. Must have been huge. <laughs> All right, a course of lectures was also planned, and on November 2nd, 1855, Colonel Edward Dickinson Baker delivered the first on the dignity of labor at Musical Hall. This was just up the street that way, up Montgomery. It was the largest venue in the city. The newspapers the next morning described it as one of the largest gatherings ever assembled in the state. The future of the Mechanics Institute indeed looked bright. That same year, there were two other lectures, but let me tell you about Edward Dickinson Baker. He was uh, an amazing guy, an outspoken abolitionist, and a good friend of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln named one of his children after him. He was a lawyer, and some of his famous cases involved um, the escaped slave Archie Lee and the notorious Charles Cora. Uh, he definitely um, lived his life in a principled way. And when Lincoln, uh, when the Civil War broke out, he led a uh, contingent of men from California to the front. Before that, he became a senator for Oregon. But um, he led these men from California to the front, and he died valiantly at the Battle of Ball's Bluff in 1861. We held a special uh, memorial for him. Meanwhile, in steps this guy, James Lloyd Lafayette Warren, Colonel Warren. He was the editor of the California Farmer and a fierce booster for California. He believed California was going to be the, the best, uh, especially because of its agricultural promise and, um, and the smart people that were coming to California. Um, he's one of the most important figures in our early days. He wrote about us every day in his paper. He made connections for us at the state capitol. And he believed in our capacity to do great things. Mr. Warren had for years, California hadn't been around for years, but he was thumping the tubs for an industrial fair that would showcase that would show off the state's industrial potential. And he looked to us to host one. Why? Because other mechanics institutes in other states were doing just that, hosting industrial fairs, boost, uh, supporting the local industry. Unfortunately, we were broke, and there was no way we could do it. Warren didn't lose heart, though. He invited the Mechanics Institute to participate in the 1856 State Fair, held on the farm of Mr. Jeremiah Miller in San Jose. We sponsored the mechanical department, and as entries flowed in to be displayed at the fair, we accepted them and arranged for their transport to San Jose. We were so successful at this that we investigated the idea of holding our own fair the following year. The question was, where were we going to get the money? We were having trouble getting our members to pay for those stocks that they bought. They only had to pay 10% down, so they didn't feel that they needed to follow through. The Institute's finances were in fact so dire that we rationed candles, and our librarian, Peter Bartell Dexter, offered to work for free setting, I might say, a very, very bad precedent for people like me. <laughs> 
Relief came in the form of a talented, beautiful, and wildly popular stage actress named Mrs. Julia Dean Hain. She was on an extended tour of the state and had a benevolent heart. She did other benefits for other outfits, and she was especially moved by our plight. She offered the proceeds from one of her engagements at the Metropolitan, and the receipts from her performance as Madeline, the Belle of the Faubourg, netted the Institute over $1,000, which in today's money would be roughly $30,000. So here's the headline in the next, or that evening's news. Victory, victory, a bloodless battle fought and won, a glorious era just begun. This is Mr. Warren talking, <laughs> um, always super excited. Uh, we speak of the triumph of labor. The article goes on for nearly two columns, gushing over Mrs. Haynes' generosity and the state's bright future because now we are out of debt. We definitely had the support of the state, uh, especially the legislature. They wanted to see industry happen too. Um, and there is absolutely no doubt that we would not be here today if it wasn't for Julia Dean Hain. The Institute could now move forward with its dreams. And one of them was to host its own industrial fair, but that was gonna have to wait a while. It first needed a building. So they advertised for someone to design the plans. This is December 1856, January 1857. The architect had to be satisfied with receiving $300 in institute stock in lieu of payment. Luckily, two of our members followed through. <laughs> what was ultimately decided upon was this design by architects Reuben Clark and Henry Kenitzer. Clark was... Um, a little bit later, he helped design, um, he was ta tasked, given the task to design uh, uh, San Quentin, the state prison, and he also was one of the architects involved with the state capitol. That particular project caused him to go mad, and he died in Stockton, <laughs> Stockton's insane asylum. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's in the future. They made us this beautiful building, a uh, beautiful drawing. Um, now the problem was we couldn't afford a lot, and we wouldn't for another five years. At the same time, plans were being laid for the first industrial fair, which will be covered in another lecture. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Our Mechanics Institute is one of the few surviving in the world that operates upon its original model of providing educational opportunities, a fantastic library, and a world-renowned chess club. It's one of the oldest libraries in the West and one of the first truly public institutions in the San Francisco Bay Area. Anyone could be a member at any time. There never were any restrictions on membership. Anyway, it has you, our members, to thank for that. What will we be like in the coming decades? With vision, strong leadership, and your championship, we can only get better. Now, in honor of our 160th year, I challenge you to do three things. I want you to tell three for as many friends as you have about the Institute, because that is what we are successful at doing in bringing in new members. I ask that you give what you can to support our operations. You all pay 95 a year. It costs us $1,000 per member per year to put on our operations. And I think you all recognize that there is no place no place that you can get the services that you get here. And above all, I ask that you be just and fear not. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I had you wrapped. I wish I could have gone on about the industrial fair. Next time, we'll plan something else because the first industrial fair is very exciting. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Do you have any questions? <laughs> yes.
Yes. A monthly lecture? Well, I would love to do that because I am excited to be researching the role of women in the Mechanics Institute. <laughs> there were no founding mothers, you'll note, uh, in that list. That's because there weren't any women here. No, there were hardly any women here. And um, they were using our library, but the man of the house took out the membership. Um, yes, I'd love to. Another question? No, let's have cake. I hope you got a chance to look at it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>